Hello and welcome to our online training for being an online host for Worship at Peace Lutheran. Last year when we first envisioned uh, streaming worship on the internet, we wanted to have something that was interactive, a place to help form community, to connect uh, people to each other. We know there are lots of churches out there that broadcast on TV or stream um, their worship services and we saw this as an opportunity to be a place of connection where real people get to interact. And so an important part of how we dreamed up this service is that as people uh, come to experience online worship and peace, they are also greeted and, uh, and you play an important part as a host in that worship. So a couple things that we're going to want to do uh, to get started. Make sure that you have your email address. That's the login and the password that got sent to you by either me or Audrey. And then I'm going to walk you through a few of the features that are part of our online host. So I'm going to try to share my screen here so you can see it. So the first thing you're going to notice when you come to uh, the space is you can just go to peacelutheran.com slash live. That's kind of the landing spot on our own website that's always going to redirect to the, the online platform. And it's happened already that they've changed the address, the system that we use. And so it was really nice that we didn't have to teach people a new place to go. It was just always peacelutheran.com slash live. So a few features that you are going to already see when you come here. Um, there, uh, there's a large uh, space in the middle where the worship, if uh, the worship were happening and being broadcast live, that would appear right here. There's a connection back to our own website, a spot to give, and then the connection card, a place to, for people to let us know that they're worshiping and put in prayer requests and such. There is already a worship live, so uh, or we have a test worship set up, and so if anyone were to go to this website right now, this is what they would see. If they were to log in, they could already get to a chat room and find out some Bible scriptures and then a schedule of what's coming up and uh, for future services, as well as the live prayer request button, and we'll kind of come back to that. Down here in the bottom of the screen, that kind of lets you know uh, what worship is being broadcast in that moment. And then there are a few features with uh, the screen to make it large screen, which will kind of get rid of the chat feature for those who really don't want to watch it. There's a place to mute and unmute and then to stop the video. Uh, but if they replay it, it's going to pick up uh, in real time where the service is and not start back up where they hit pause. Uh, the volume is kind of important to know because uh, as anyone comes to the site, it's defaulted to be muted. And so sometimes that has been tricky for people to, uh, to figure out how to unmute. So we're going to go ahead and log in to the site. And then you kind of see the back end that the host and administrators get to see uh, why we're hosting online worship. So again, the worship is going to be up here in the corner. You can see the little eye icon, which is uh, the little eyeballs telling you how many people are watching uh, the service at that same time. And the same kind of features for, for pausing the video and volume control. Now, if there were kind of some information uh, for the host to know, that would be kind of be here in the announcement uh, side. And if uh, someone were to request a private prayer, you would be little notifications here. And so this is just a place to get some information. Not typically much is going to be in there. Then we have two different host chat windows. The host chat uh, is a place for administrators and the host to communicate. So it's kind of a private chat just with those who are logged in and have that kind of access. Normally, we only have one host per service, so there's no one else to kind of chat with, but that might be a place that if we have multiple hosts, they could send some messages back and forth. And the public chat is really where most of the information is going to be posted and the comments are going to come and what has to be monitored. And there's the little heart feature. So if it's a live worship and someone clicks that, um, it will actually show a little heart fly across the screen. 
uh, for those who are watching. Uh, so a few things to kind of note uh, about the service. The, the chat's gonna happen and I have a second computer set up here. And so when, when someone is, is logged in and they're gonna see the comment. So you, whatever username they sign in, will kind of give a description and, and then their message. If um, the hosts have the ability to chat individually with people, and so if someone were to make a comment, you know, that they wanted to connect with the pastor or had a question that maybe you could answer, you could actually start a direct chat with them. And that was just gonna appear over here on the, on the left side uh, in the VR chat. Hello, what is your question? And you could have a private conversation with just those, if you wanted to invite a different host to participate or to leave uh, that individual chat, it would close it up. And it's gonna look very similar if someone hits the prayer request button, but we'll come to that in a moment. You also have a couple other abilities. If someone posts something that really doesn't belong in the chat, and this doesn't happen very often for us so far. I think once I deleted um, the, the uh, social media information for you know a young person of our congregation that we you know try to respect some privacy that way uh, so you could delete the message or if uh, someone's really being belligerent you could mute them which if you mute someone it's really kind of complicated to get them back in um, you know they may actually sign up for a new account to come back in if they were really motivated but it would block that user and an administrator would have to come in later and unblock them. So we really hope to, to not need those kinds of uh, features. Although when we tested this platform, watching some other churches that have been using this for a while, there were definitely times where comments were deleted and users were, were muted for having kind of inappropriate conversations. So we want to at least be aware that that's a possibility, even if it's not something that luckily we have had to deal with very much. On the left hand side, uh, again, this uh, control panel is going to change what's over here in the spot beneath the video. So host information, if there's uh, notes that come up, um, the moments is gonna be probably one of the things you're gonna need to keep track of. And the moments are opportunities to post time sensitive comments um, during the worship chat. So for example, when we get to the beginning of the service and uh, the pastor invites people to fill out the connect card, you might just come over here and find the connection card and hit post. And then that will show up in the chat as a clickable link. And so when someone clicks on that link, then it takes them to the page to fill out the connect card or to give or whatever the moment might be. The moments are preloaded for you, and so there will only typically be three or four kind of options, and uh, those may expand a little bit as we move forward. So kind of uh, what you should expect to see right now is the connect card at the beginning of worship. We'll almost always have the give now option, so when we get to the offering time, it's a great uh, moment to just kind of post that at the beginning of the time so people can very easily find the give button. Uh, I'm not sure why the salvation tab is there. We normally try to make sure that's not included because it's just not part of our worship theology, but certainly if it by chance it makes it in there accidentally, never click it. Um, we're, we're not asking people to commit their lives to Christ. Um, that's just not a part of, of our tradition or practice. So uh, we have a few duplicates in here. So uh, it's every so often though, if we plan ahead and there's maybe a quote from the sermon, there might be a cue to say, hey, during this part of the sermon, you can kind of post this quote and uh, people who, who might be listening or, and watching like, oh, I wonder what he said. I wish I could remember those words that that could be pre-made. Now, we haven't really gotten too far into that yet. Uh, we also have a special call to action in this worship series we're at uh, to take the generosity assessment, a little online survey. 
And so when that were kind of mentioned during either the announcements or beginning of the worship, the invitation to do that, we could post that kind of comment and it would show up to take the assessment. And so kind of knowing what moments are coming up will help you as the, the host know when is the appropriate time to post those. And hopefully they are pretty self-explanatory. If anything gets to be too complicated, we'll make sure to let you know ahead of time. And if there's any notes you want to take for the service, and again, you have access to the Bible readings and the schedule, those same features that are present on the user interface. Now, just uh, I'm going to hit the live prayer because every so often that does happen too. And so if someone on their end were to hit the live prayer request. Um, you'll see on the bottom of uh, the host panel, it come up and it says who's requested a prayer and the time and one of the hosts will have to accept it. So as soon as you accept it, it adds that chat to the left side of the screen and you can kind of um, uh, see where uh, I had two kind of chats with the same person. So the chat that I instigated and then the prayer request and it gives you the information. You know, the Vihars requested prayer at 144. The host accepted it and, um, and then I've joined the chat. Typically what I do um, when responding first, because really most people who I've experienced who have hit that button have hit it by mistake. And uh, so I might respond, uh, hello, you hit the live prayer button. What can we pray for today? And then we will respond and then see if they give a prayer request or sometimes they just don't respond at all or they'll, they'll leave that chat. Uh, if they do offer a prayer request, we ask just a couple things. One is uh, forward that prayer request on to, uh, to one of the pastors so that we know what came up. And then if we need to follow through pastorally, um, that we can do that. And then to, uh, to offer a prayer, kind of right then, to say, you know, I'll pass your prayer request on, and then maybe to type up something. None of these prayers really have to be complicated or in-depth. Um, you know, if it's, uh, you know, we want to lift up, and if you'd please pray for our uncle who's diagnosed with cancer, maybe just uh, ask for a first name and say, yes, let us pray. Dear God, we pray for your healing touch for so-and-so who's been diagnosed with cancer. You know, may they feel the comfort of your presence. And we're working on kind of developing a few sample prayers that uh, you would have available to, to kind of put in that spot. But, you know, really it's an opportunity to just listen and to engage and doesn't have to be very complicated. And, you know, when that prayer is done, you can just kind of leave it up or everything seems like it's uh, uh, ended and moved on with the worship. You can just kind of leave that feature. And so it just deletes it from your, your side navigation and, and moves on. And you'll see in the chat, again, that uh, you know who accepted the chat uh, and the prayer request. Really, that is most of the features that are, are in. Um, as far as a couple practices that I think would be good for our host to have at the beginning of the chat time and worship is just to uh, send a greeting. So hello, thanks for worshiping with us today. It helps if I spell correctly. Glad you are here. That wasn't really a question, but that's what I typed it. Um, you can ask who is here worshiping with us today. And um, some of our hosts have gotten pretty involved in kind of welcoming and greeting anyone who, who comes in. So if someone signs in, hey, the Vihars are here. Uh, the, ha the hosts have been great. Welcome Vihars and welcome whole family. So it's uh, good to have a little bit of um, connection time at the beginning. Uh, again, then to hit those moments throughout the service. And then when we get to the end of the service, to thank worshipers for coming. So thanks 
for joining us. Hope to see you soon. So it doesn't need to be that complicated to give a welcome and greeting to uh, hit those moments throughout the service and then to, to offer a sending and a thank you and an invitation to, to come back again. So as we kind of continue to develop this online ministry, we'll, we'll probably try to add in some, some features and, and conversation points, some questions to really help formulate this as an online community. And so if you have thoughts or comments about how we can help do that or what tools would be most useful for you, we'd love to, to know your experience and to, to keep developing this. So if you have any questions, please reach out to, to me or to Audrey and uh, we'll be happy to help get you on board with, um, with all of us. So thanks again for your time and for this ministry and for all the ways that we are a part of this work at peace. It is great to join in this work of sharing the gospel. So with that, uh, again, blessings to you on this day, and we'll see you all soon.